This question is to graph the ellipsis. It is from the lesson 6.3. Before we begin with the problems, let's look into the formulas. Here we can see the standard form. There can be two types depending on the orientation of horizontal and vertical. Let me just tell you what these means exactly. If the horizontal axis is the biggest axis of the ellipse, then it will be something like this, the ellipse. And whatever is in the horizontal, horizontal is x-axis. This will have the vertice points, vertices. Whereas in the vertical axis, it's going to look something like this. It will be along the y-axis. That's vertical axis, y. And this very important thing in the standard form, when it is along horizontal, x must be written first. x minus h the whole squared by a squared. Whereas if it is along the vertical axis, you can see y divided by a squared. Why does a squared, sorry, why does this k vary? See, this vertex is given by h, k. Okay, vertices. Now here, th this matters, you know, because one vertex will, will be over here, another vertex will be over here. We will get to that in a while. You don't need to know all this information, but just remember vertex is h and k. It's given as x and y axis. So whenever you're dealing with x, that is h value of vertex, whereas the y axis will be along the k. So when I write the standard form for horizontal, it will be x minus, which is along x axis, h the whole squared divided by a squared plus y minus k the whole squared divided by b squared equals 1. b is the distance between the co-vertices. Now these smaller values will be the co-vertex. It's not the entire distance, it's just from the center, from here if we count the vertex and the co-vertex, that's it. Now we will see problems. You don't need to know all these by heart, but if you just remember the standard form and the orientation, that's more than enough. Let me show you how we can solve them. Since this is only in the electronic part, you know your four options, there will be equations, right? Now what is this? This is the vertex because this is longer. So here vertex is 0 and 5 and co-vertex is 3 and 0 and obviously it will be minus 3 and 0 as well. Over here also it will be minus 5. The reason being the center is 0 and 0. When the center is 0 and 0, it's so easy. Why? Because you don't need to write minus h minus k. It just reduces to y squared plus x squared. Here it's a squared b squared equals 1. Why did I write y first? Because it's along the y-axis, isn't it? So now here, let's count from the center. It's how many units? It's 5 units easily because each unit over here, it's 2, 4 and 5. So what I need is 5 squared. It's going to be 25 plus what is x value from here? It's 2 plus 1, 3. So here will be 9. 3 squared is 9. x squared equals 1. This will be the answer. You just have to choose this correct answer. And that's it. What about the next one? Here the center is not 0. But you can easily find out which is the center. These points are given to you, the focus and everything. But you don't need all that. You just need the center. You can approximate the center to be over here. And there's another trick to remember for the center. Just let's see what is the co-vertex point. It is x value is 4. What is the y value? It is 0. And here the x value will be the same. But y value is negative 12. If you look carefully, there will be one of the values repeating in the vertex and co-vertex. So what is repeating in the vertex? It's minus 6. So this must have the center. Is the center? No, center is not given. But the center must have minus 6 along the y. And what is the repeating in the x? It's 4. So it's 4, comma minus 6. This is the center. So this will be there over here. And along which orientation is it? You can see it's along the x-axis. So x-axis first minus, sorry, don't square it up, x minus h, the whole squared by a squared plus y minus k, the whole squared by b squared equals 1. Now let's substitute what we know. x, h is 4, but we have already minus. So just you can remember this. If it was positive 4 here, you put minus 4 the whole squared and for y it is minus 6 if it's minus you put the plus 6 here 
the whole squared divided by what is a value now you just have to count till the vertex it's two four let me just check here it's two four six seven seven squared is 49 here divided by what is the co vertex it's two four six that is 36 equals one that's the answer so here we should have x minus 4 the whole squared by 49 plus y minus 6 the y plus 6 because it was minus 6 it will become plus 6 divided by 36 equals 1. The best part in the ellipse is always the vertex will be bigger than the co-vertex but it is not the same in the hyperbolas. In hyperbolas the a value or b value whichever can be greater but in ellipses a is always greater than B. The vertices are always bigger than the co-vertices. Now let's look into this problem. Here they have two vertices is so and so, co-vertices and so and so. But what if this was not given? They are just given graph uh, only the points. What if it was a tough exam and only the four points are given and you need to find the equation of an ellipse. So in such case, what I would suggest is try graphing roughly at least. Now we have minus 2, it's somewhere over here, minus 2, and minus 6, I'll take it as over here. And then minus 2 and 4, somewhere over here. And then we have 1 and minus 1, just over here, and minus 5 and something over here. Looking at this orientation, I can tell it's a vertical orientation, right? But what if my, my obviously my graph is not the scale, my drawing was so bad, imagine it was so bad that I just can't, I've drawn a circle sort of thing. How do you count this? Look at the points. Minus 6 to 4. What's the distance between them? Minus 6 and 4 will be 10. Whereas over here, minus 5 to 1, it's only 6 distance. So, of course, this is the vertex. Now, this is given over here, but if it was not given as well, you can tell these are vertex points. Minus 2 and 4 here. Minus 2 and 6 here. Then we have minus 5. No, it's minus 5 and minus 1 here. And then we have 1 and minus 1. So these are the points. It's very easy to find the center. I'm not going to count anything midpoint or any, any of that. Just look which are the common values in x and in y. One of the set will have one common value. See vertices as x common. That is minus 2. And over here we have minus 1. That's y value. Now just count from here to any of the vertex and the co-vertex. I'll just count here. It's minus 1, so 0 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the vertex. So here a squared will be 5 squared, that's 25. Plus what about the co-vertices? From, my, uh, from minus 2, I can count till 1, that is 1, 2, to 0, and 3. That'll be 9. What about this? It's along the y-axis, so it's going to be y... What is y value over here? Minus 1, but it will be plus 1 the whole square. And over here, it's going to be x plus 2 the whole square equals 1. This is it. So easily, you can write this equation. So this is the answer here. The same thing which we got. And last problem here, they have told vertices. Now, I'll draw without drawing anything. I'm going to solve this without drawing. But if you draw it, it's much easier. So here we have phi and phi common. So I'm going to know the midpoint. The center is going to be phi and over here 6 and 6, 6. So in the equation, I must look for, in the options, I mean, I must look for y minus phi, the old, which is bigger here. It's along the uh, y-axis because the y, sorry, it's along the x-axis here. Why? Because the y value is constant. So here the y value Imagine it's phi and phi, right? So it's going to be here, phi and phi. Only the x value is changing. It's along the x-axis, okay? That's the reason we come to know. So you can memorize few things as well. It's better to draw the coordinate. Just draw it. It will be much, much easier. But another thing to remember is if the y is constant, that means x is changing along the vertices. It's along the x-axis. So it should be x minus 6 the whole squared plus y minus 5 the whole squared. From the center, we got these. Now, what is the vertex A value? From 6, we are just count to any of this point. I either count it to minus 2 or to 14. From 6 to minus 2 or to 14, it should be the same. 
So from here, if you go 6 plus 2 is 8, or if you go from uh, 14 minus 6, it'll be 8. So 8 squared is 64. What about the co-vertices? Here we have to see not the x. It's done over here. x is done. y value 5 along this 1 and 9. So what is the distance from year to year? It's 4. From year to year, 4. It should be the same. Here also, it's 8 and 8. The distance is same. Here also, the distance must be same. It's 16. That is equal to 1. So this is how we can get the equations easily. Now, even from the center, when you get this, you will have four options, isn't it? You can easily eliminate many options and you can conclude this is the answer. So that's how we solve it up. That is the end of this question. I hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please consider re-watching the video or posting your doubts in the comments. I hope you all will head on to the next video.